Oh, that was awesome. Oh my God. If you're thinking about getting on a motorcycle for the first time, you've probably got this idealized vision of what it's gonna be like. In your mind, you're probably dragging knee around a corner, your hair blowing in the breeze as the pump up music from MotoGP plays in the background. Your brain is doing speed ramps, showing you in slow motion, then speeding it back up so you look fast as hell. Then you get to where you're going and a bunch of scantily clad women or men, whatever you're into, run up and fall over your awesomeness while you sit there revving your badass leader bike. Like. In reality, motorcycling is just a little bit different. There's no Instagram filters, excellent backing music, and a lot more wedgies than you might expect. Or maybe you're a noob who's been riding around for a while and waiting for the choir of angels to start serenading you. Well, I'm sorry to say that's not going to happen unless you end up on a V4 or a crossplane in line 4. There's a lot of misconceptions noobs have about motorcycling, and today we're going to break down the most common ones, and because I'm all about just ripping the band-aid off quick, I'm going to tell you what it's really like. Don't let this discourage you though, motorcycles are still awesome and you should totally get one, but you're probably gonna have a slightly more mundane experience than you might think. The first misconception I wanna clear up is the idea that people might care that you ride a bike. Have you ever been talking to someone about one of your hobbies? Let's take hentai for example, because for some reason the audience out there seems to love it and this is my life now. You might be entertaining someone at your place, giving them a grand tour, and then you show off your collection of VHSs, DVDs, and graphic novels talking about the various intricacies of what makes your collection different from the average basement dwelling anime enthusiast to the bored and judgmental uh-huh and okays of someone who is trapped in the darkest timeline begging for the sweet release of death. The only person who would actually care is another degenerate and they'd rather discuss their collection rather than yours. Well, motorcycling is the same way. Your parents won't care, your significant other won't care, your friends won't care, and the guy behind the counter at your local gear shop won't won't care either. If you want to talk to someone about motorcycle or cool roads to ride around your area or how you just finished doing battle with an oil change for the first time and are now on a fishing expedition looking for a pat on the noodle, you need to find yourself some other motorcyclist. But much like with other hentai enthusiasts, motorcyclists will only care about your situation up until a point. Eventually, they'll walk away trying to find someone else to talk to. That is, unless, of course, you're on a really cool bike, then it buys you like an extra five minutes of attention. But maybe you're a house mouse with crippling agoraphobia, and the thought of an in-person human interaction makes you curl up in the fetal position and cry. How will you ever be able to share your passion for motorcycling with someone else? Well, lucky for you, we've got a community of over 3,000 motorcyclists hanging out and talking about all kinds of stuff in our Discord server. We've got channels for picking your first bike, help with maintenance, and because the Ouroboros is eating its tail, we've even got one dedicated to anime. Yes, I caved and I made an anime channel for the boys. I'm a loving and giving god. It's like a bike night that never ends with one of the best community of newly minted riders, old salty vets, and bike curious people looking to just see what it's all about. Click the link down below and check out yamanoob.co to get started. Best of all, you'll get entered to win our giveaway bikes at the same time. That's pretty cool, right? Now, on to number two, motorcycles are cheaper than cars. Who on God's green earth started this misconception? I keep hearing it bandied about all the time and even Spite said he got into motorcycles because they'd be a cheaper way to get around. Yeah, maybe it's cheaper to go buy a motorcycle than it is to buy a car, but when was the last time you needed a new helmet to go for a ride in your Honda Fit? There's gas, which you have in cars, maintenance, which you have in cars, and insurance, which you have in cars. But then there's the gear, which needs to be replaced fairly frequently. On top of that, you've got mods because you can keep a car stock, but keeping a stock bike is illegal. I think. But let's acknowledge the reality of motorcycle ownership in America. Most people use their car as their daily driver, their grocery getter, or just to get in from around the rain. They roll around the bike on weekends or for the occasional trip to the office. That means that your bike is most likely going to be a secondary vehicle, not a replacement. I mean, if you have a KLR 650, you can put a milk crate on the back and use it to run errands, but if you want an actual bike, it's gonna be a toy. That means two vehicles on your insurance, two to maintaining gas up. Yeah, you'll split your miles a bit, but it's gonna be nothing but a money pit. Number three, motorcycles are going to kill you. Usually the phrase shouted at you by your parents when towards the end of your high school years, you turn to them and say, you wanna get on a bike. Usually it's followed up by, if you wanna get one of those, you need to find somewhere else to live. Here's the thing. Motorcycles are more dangerous than cars. 
obviously. I mean, you don't have roll cages, you don't have airbags and seatbelts and crumple zones and all the rest of that vehicular bubble wrap. But on the flip side, you're not going to immediately burst into flames the second you touch a motorcycle. Your level of danger is directly related to the amount of risks you're willing to take when you're on the bike. Do you want to go for a ride without a helmet and gear like a true Harley pirate? Then obviously you're going to get more hurt in an accident and you're taking higher risk. At the end of the day, motorcycling is as safe or as dangerous as you want it to be. That leads me nicely into misconception number four. You're going to ride safe. It's your go-to response to the not-in-my-house response from your parents. Oh, sure, there's people out there popping wheelies on the highway at 186 miles an hour while wearing nothing but cargo shorts and flip-flops. But don't worry, Mom, I'll ride safe. Here's the reality. You will ride safe for the most time on your bike, but not always. When you first get on the bike, you're going to be too timid to really open the throttle. You'll be really early on the brakes and barely lean the bike over. That's all down to not being comfortable or practiced on the bike, but once you build those skills, it's only natural to want to test them a little. You'll start leaning the bike just a little bit further, braking a little bit later, and you'll hold the throttle a little bit longer. It's totally natural, and if everyone was honest with themselves, they'd admit they'd do similar things in their cars. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where if a ride goes by and you don't hit wide open throttle, it doesn't even count. You'll do some dumb stuff from time to time, but the key is that you pick your moments. Or better yet, check out your local track and see what it feels like to ride without speed limits. Or maybe cornering scares you and you just want to go fast. Find a drag strip. You've got parking lots for wheelie practice and dirt for everything else. It's possible to ride like a hooligan and be safe. Just make sure you're doing it in the right places. Number five, in keeping with our theme of safety, more expensive gear means it's safer. It makes sense, right? More money must mean more better, right? Well, not really. With advances in technology and standards of manufacturing, companies have been able to make gear at an entry-level price point perform just as well as some top-shelf stuff and crash tests. It's not like the ECE has regulations at different price brackets. The main difference between cheap gear and expensive gear typically comes down to the type of material used and the comfort of that gear. Let's talk helmets for a second. Bottom dollar lids will put all their perk points into safety and leave nothing left in the bank for comfort, meaning that the liners are often made out of scratchy cloth, or maybe they don't even breathe that well since they couldn't work ventilation in and keep costs down. On a fancier helmet, you don't have to sacrifice comfort at the altar of safety. They'll have liners and pads specifically moldable to your face, quilted in the finest Egyptian cotton or whatever. You get the point. It's worth pointing out that some helmet manufacturers and gear manufacturers writ large are starting to work in premium features at a budget price, which is pretty cool. If you know where to look, it's possible to find a jacket at $300 that'll have the same, if not more, features than one that's twice the price. Number six, here's a good one I see in the comments a lot, only sport bikes are fast. It makes sense in the mind of the uninitiated, sport bike equals crotch rocket, crotch rocket equals fast, and that means that anything that doesn't look like a crotch rocket cannot be fast. Well, tell that to the Tenere 700 that absolutely dumpstered your Mustang off the line. The idea of sport bikes being the only fast bikes is just plain wrong. Most manufacturers trickle tech down from their high performance top of the range leader bikes and work it into bikes across the fleet. Naked bikes might look a little goofy with the uninitiated with their lack of fairings and weird angles, but they're usually packing some derivation of a proper sport bike engine. Same with ADV bikes, which usually share the same engine as naked bikes most of the time. Hell, even Harley is making an ADV with 150 horsepower and over 90 foot-pounds of torque with a curb weight of 550 pounds. That'll outrun pretty much everything on the street up to triple digits. Also, if you've never ridden a bike before, then even a humble Ninja 400 is going to feel really fast, so maybe you should reserve judgment on which bikes are and aren't fast. Unless it's a Turbo Busa, then we both know it's the fastest thing in the world. Which, by the way, have you subscribed yet? We're so, so close to a million. Let's go, people. Number seven. They'll get you laid. Ah, this old chestnut. We see movie stars sitting on bikes in movies with members of the opposite sex fawning over them and think that it'll happen to you. You'll run out and get yourself a motorcycle and park in front of some cool club, walk in with your sweet Dainese gear and a stealthy black helmet. Maybe you're even swinging your key around your finger as an icebreaker. You've even practiced your pickup lines in the mirror or something like, yeah, I've got a bike. You want to ride? with a smooth, berry white baritone and a waggle of the eyebrows. But as I said earlier, no one cares. Actually, that's not entirely true. You might strike out with all the ladies inside, but when they're sulking your way back to your bike off to ride into the sunset alone, again, you'll hear a voice calling from behind. Man, that's a sweet ride you got right there. And it'll say, what is it? You'll turn around and happy to test that pickup line out and not get laughed at. You'll see a salty old rider standing behind you. 
Look guys, I've said it before, but it bears repeating that motorcycles are not something you should be getting as a way to get laid or meet people. Buy a bike because you want to. If any of that other stuff happens along the way, it'll just be a nice bonus. Fact. The shark on Jaws and the T-Rex on Jurassic Park poster were both modeled after exhibits in the American Natural Museum of History. Goodbye. Woo-wee, I tell you what, there's another Yammy new video right over here waiting for you. It's Yosemite Yam, back at it again. Upgraded from Cowboy Yam by popular demand. Tell you what, click on this video right over here. Gonna get you cowboy, hooting and hollering, having all kinds of fun, cutting up with your buddies out there, watching another Yammy new video. Woo-wee!